Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let's stand for opening prayer, please. Lord God of heaven and earth, we praise you and bless you tonight, Father. We thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for your presence here, Lord. We just ask, Lord God, that you move among your people tonight, Lord. We need you tonight, Lord God. Come and change hearts for you, Lord God, and minister to those that know you, Lord. We love you and we need you tonight. In your precious name, Lord, amen. amen. All right, before Sister Rhonda comes to lead us in singing, we're going to have Sister Rhonda stand, and it's her birthday yesterday. So we have to sing loud because we missed it yesterday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. For those that are interested, a Reverend Fulton had a surgery today, he came through spine, and uh, the doctor said that uh, where they had done chemo and radiation on him, that it looked 95% better. She was said it was looking good, and, and they, took a few, they took a few polyps, and they're going to send that and uh, a tissue sample from where they, he had the radiation and uh, get the results from that. But uh, he's resting, and, uh, and keep him in your prayers. Amen. All right, Sister Rhonda is going to come forward and lead us. In. Okay, I need a raise of hands. Um, who has a song that they would like to sing? It would have to be something we know. We have no piano player. 85. 85. 85. Amazing grace.
chipper. So why don't you get up and greet your neighbor around you and say, I'm glad you're in the house of the Lord with me tonight. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Yes. It is good to see each one of you here tonight. Amen. 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 We're, we're blessed and fortunate to be able to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. To have a place like the mission and to have camaraderie here with each other and all that we have here at the mission. The Lord's been good to us. Well, we want to go to prayer. We have to take prayer requests. And if you have a current pressing testimony, this would be the time for it. Pray for Brother Joe as he brings the message tonight. Amen. Scott? Brother Ruth? Absolutely, yes, sir. Just packed up and with me for my whole week. Okay. She's in the delivery business. I'd like to thank his wife, Shelly, for her surgery in Indiana. All right. Her surgery went real well on Monday. When did you have her? Monday? Yeah. make a big difference. It is already I know. I had mine three or four years ago. Yeah. You're surprised what you what you thought you uh, could see that you couldn't see. That's amazing. No, no. Well, pray for my son, uh, daughter, and my grandkids. Okay. I want to pray for Sister Foster, for the Lord to comfort her. She's still having trouble with uh, the death of her daughter, Arlene. Mm -hmm. It's hard for a a parent to lose a child. Amen. Brother Black? Hey, okay. Brother Black? All right, who else would like prayer? I know I would. All right, let's stand for prayer. Brother Greg, would you take us to the throne, please?
Mission. The ushers are coming forward and we'll take the evening offering. Every Wednesday night, the offering goes to Latin American Ministries. Uh, brother, it's for the work they do in Guatemala. Building, Brother Goodman, building uh, God's kingdom in Guatemala, building churches, building people. And so every Wednesday, that's where our offering goes. And they so appreciate it because they're amazed at how much that here at a homeless shelter that the men send them. Well, thank you all for your giving, and now Sister Rhonda is going to come forward and lead us in uh, one more song. By the way, the lady that blessed me with the $400, her name is Helen. Just pray and ask the Lord to bless her mightily. Um, I'm going to do the last song, and it's going to be 283. 283.
tonight. Let's open up our heart and see what the Lord has for us tonight through Brother uh, Fred. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. It's been a day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, there's going to be some fire today. Praise the Lord. What a day that will be. Hallelujah. That's what we're waiting for, the coming of our Lord. That's the hope of glory that we speak about in our spirit that keeps us going each and every day, knowing that God is coming to get us, knowing that the power of the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, knowing that we hear the voice of God. And that's what I want to get at tonight, that you have to listen to the voice of God. You have to hear the voice of God. If you're going to go anywhere in life, if you're going to go anywhere to be successful and do the things that God called you to do, we have to hear the voice of God. And make sure that it's the voice of God, not somebody else's voice. That it may not be pride. It may not be standing in your own school. It may not be standing in your own intelligence. It, may, it could be fear. It could be the other guy trying to get you out the way. It could be your neighbor seeing what God spoke to him. It may not be for you. So you have to be sure that you hear the voice of God. And that truly you, you tune into the frequency of G-O-D. We've got to test positive for G-O-D every day. So you can hear the voice of God and know where you're going and what you're supposed to be doing. And truly, truly there's a walk with you because then there's a relationship between you and God. Let's, uh, let's stand up and let's turn over to John chapter 10. If we will tonight real quick, we share this quick word and you guys can go home. I know it's Wednesday and we're, and we're tired, but we have to give God his, his place tonight. Because God wants to speak to somebody here tonight. God wants to make sure that you know he loves you, that you know you belong to him, and that you know he's on top of you every day. He cares for you. John chapter 10, verse 27 says, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Simple verse. Let's say it again. My sheep hear my voice, and will follow him. Amen. You can have a seat. Two minutes, thank you. Very simple. Jesus saying, my sheep hear my voice. They follow me. And in retrospect, figuratively speaking, the sheep always follow the shepherd because he knows the shepherd's voice. And it's so extraordinary that you can have a thousand sheep in a fold. That's said you got ten shepherds, so each shepherd has a hundred sheep. But that one shepherd has a certain call a certain cry, a certain noise that he makes, and those hundred sheep get up willfully, truthfully, obey him, and follows the shepherd out to the pastor. No matter what they're doing, they know they're being led by the good shepherd. We should learn in our, in our heart to be led by the good shepherd who is Jesus Christ. This is what he was trying to say, no sign of his terminology. And it's so powerful, the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, that the shepherd can call out one sheep by the chain of his tone of his voice, and that one sheep will come out. And the rest will stay pasture the green grass that they're at. David said in Psalm 23, said, The Lord is my shepherd, thou shalt not want. That's the powerful relationship David had with God. He saw God through a different perspective. He saw God through a different lens. He put God in a place that no other, no other scripture has ever written highly about the presence of God. David said, The Lord is my shepherd, thou shalt not want. He said, God is so good that he leads us down the green pasture so we can what, chill and eat and rest and then by the still waters. Sheep cannot be in rough waters. They'll drown. They're scared. They're very timid animals. But the thing about the still water is God wants to take you to a place of still waters. Here. So you can lock out and block out all the noise out there that's trying to interfere with you listening to the voice of God. That's what's inside of you that belongs to God has to Come into agreement with Jesus Christ. If it's not coming to agreement with the Lord, then you're not hearing the voice of God. God sees all things. God can see and sense everything and hears your cry every night. He knows what you're going through. Make no mistake about that. He knows you're suffering. He knows you're uncomfortable. He knows you don't want to be here. He knows things are not working out the way you expect it to be. But it has to be that way. To go from one green pasture to another. So you can learn how to tune into the voice of God. Because when the enemy comes, he'll always try to imitate the things of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, I think he says, and the enemy will come as the angel of light. You have to learn to see his mechanisms, to deceive where he's at. He'll always try to make the voice of God look good and better. 
But is it really him? That's what you have to learn, discern. Where am I supposed to be? Where am I supposed to go? What does God want me to do? What kind of Christian am I supposed to be? One could be a pastor, one could be an evangelist, one could be a missionary, the one could be a greeter at the door. You have to find out what God wants you to do for him, not for nobody else, to be in his perfect will. And the thing about the relationship between the sheep and the pastor is they could be eating in the nice green grass for a moment, and the shepherd decides to take them somewhere else, move them to another place, and when he calls them out, they all leave immediately. They don't start to think about, oh, this grass tastes good. Well, we, I got a happy meal right here. Yo, hold up. Uh, can we get some ketchup and french fries? Well, we, no. They get up and they move. They don't come up against the pastor. They don't come up against the word of God. They don't come up and rise with, with, with an attitude. They don't come and take a time out. They don't have a second guess at it. They flow with the pastor and respect his decision and trust God. We have to trust God for what he's doing in our lives as we hear his voice and where we're going with this and why we're here. And how we're supposed to develop these things. Why? So when we get out there, we leave with all the tools necessary as a Christian. And you're going to want to serve God and be happy serving God. Philippians 2.13 says, God produces in us his good will and his good pleasure. Both. You're going to feel good about being a Christian. You're going to do good being a Christian. You're going to want to serve God as a good Christian. That's his job. And that's what he delights in us. And the end. The most important thing to understand tonight is that God wants to be with us. He wants to be with his sheep. He came down to teach us the way to walk to get to heaven. He knows you're going through some rough time and rough waters. But you're to a place where you can stand still with him and have a relationship with him. Have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God and discuss your issues with him and the things you need to learn and things you need to do. And we're fighting amongst each other. And this ruck is going on amongst each other, and this static amongst each other, and this evil is striking him, it is not of God. That stays out in the street. That don't belong here. We don't want that here. We're used to that madness out there, but we have still waters now. That's what to get out of us. All that street now, all that street ghetto stuff that we put on ourselves, uncertain to survive, we don't need that no more. We're going to replace that with the fruits of the Spirit of God, with love and peace and joy and a tenderness among each other and the goodness of God and be patient and wait for things to come to you. Just because you don't receive the prayer your way and God hasn't shown up your way does not mean God does not hear your prayer. It's got to be his way. And in that process, as we wait patiently, we grow. We develop a different character, a better character, a better sense of being, an appreciation for where we're at, a grateful heart. So when he calls our voice, we know. When God calls us to do duty, we go. There's no question about it. Because you're going to want to serve God. These are the tools that we try to teach here. They move on to holiness, to righteousness, that good living, that favor of God upon your life. It's going to be all good, but there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay to get there. It takes time to study, time to spend time in prayer because you want to be with God. Not because you have to. God's the one man who are qualified. He called the unqualified. When David, excuse me. When God called Abraham, he was flowing, looking at the invisible one, the Bible said, the book of Hebrews. He heard the voice of God. He knew that was God because God had shown himself to him. But he didn't know where he was going. And God didn't speak after that for 40 years. He kept faithfully serving God for 40 years until he got to Moriah. That's why it's kind of justice on his righteousness. Just because God's not speaking to you now, it don't mean you're wrong, it don't mean you're right. It means to hold on, be still, know that I'm God. That's why I brought him out of still waters. Chill by the still waters. Refresh yourself, restore yourself. Restruct, restart again, rebuild. Resurrect yourself. And the newness of God and the nowness of God, today, now, there's no room for mistakes. There's, there's, there's no room for second guessing what if God. God told Moses, keep going forward. Moses was praying, was surrounded. Moses heard the voice of God. Moses loved God. What did God do? He heard the cry of his people. He opened up the Red Sea. Impossible, but he could do it. He did it. He heard the voice of Daniel in the lion's den. Did he not show up? Hallelujah. 
Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. He heard his children going through turmoil. They would not bow down to the devil. They served God faithfully. Did he not show up? Is God a liar? Never. God can't lie. God can't lose. It's not in his nature. Hallelujah. Come on now. When David went to battle, he fought. He went to get the ark. It might have been the right decision of God, but his heart was in the right place. God still backed him up. Joshua called out to God. God stood the sun still 24 hours. Somebody help me here. In the book of Judges, he raised Samson and all the other great men at that, at that particular time. A few, the proud and the few, many are called, but few are chosen because they wanted to serve God. Where do we stand today? We just passing through? Re resort time, recreation time? I got a job waiting for me, a couple extra dollars? What is that going to get you in the near future? When we already tried that out there, that's why we're here. So whose voice are we listening to? What waters are we drinking? Who are we trusting? Psalm 720 says, some trust in chariots, others trust in horses. We trust in the Lord. You can't trust the bank, the banks are falling apart. You can't trust the president because they're all corrupted and wild getting high. And, and, and some, and more wickedness. You know what I'm talking about? So we're not going to the right, we're going to the left. To the left, to the left, right? That's not what God said, that's not what God wants, that's not what God called us to do. But this world decided to do that. You have to decide on how where you want to go. You want to walk with God, me and my house, and serve the Lord, or you're going to walk with the world. He pulled out Lot and Sarah, out of Saddam and Gomorrah, and gave the strict instructions, don't look back. And the sister looked back, what happened to her? She got what she wanted. We'll never suck against God. We're here with a purpose and a destiny. This is why sometimes it feels so rough and sometimes it's so uncomfortable because we're going to preach the word of God truthfully the way it is. The word of truth. The doctrine of truth. And we have to learn these things. Everybody can't be up here preaching all the time because we need men doing other things in the kingdom of God. And you have to give your life to this to serve God out of a true heart. Trust God for what God told you. Trust the things you've heard about the Lord in your quiet time. Talk to God in your quiet time. It's important, it's expedient now in these times that are getting worse and worse and worse. We're not going to have a second shot at this. It's not going to happen. That's not what the Bible says. The enemy knows that we're, that we're more than a conqueror. The enemy knows that we're children of God. The enemy knows that, that, that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. The enemy knows that we have a great God serving over us who, who keeps us safe all the time. He knows. He knows that we have 10,000 angels at our beck and call by the word of God. He knows we, that we have it there under the shadow of the Almighty. He knows. Amen. He saw Elijah in that cave. God saw him and went to him because that's his child. God cares. The enemy believes that, so why can't we believe it? What's wrong with the church? What happened to the word? Where's that manna coming from heaven? The greatest thing that God can ever give us today is the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He's the one who's going to lead you and guide you. The voice of God in you, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the one you've got to cherish. Not because he's least, because he was the last one revealed in the book of God. That's the one we've got to get to. That's what you need to spend time on. Move. Move in that direction. You're spending time with other things that are not of God, that are negative, you're never going to hear the voice of God. You won't get to it. You won't have time to. You're not going to want that because you're, you're eating off the wrong grass. You're in the wrong crowd. You're in the wrong dimension. And God can't reach you because you don't want God to touch you. You enjoy yourself wildly in sin. You enjoy yourself doing what you're doing. You enjoy the cards and, and the lavishness and the bling bling. That's what you want. And there are those that are other sheep, verse 10, 16, that hear his voice. And that are wishing and waiting, is there a real God? Is there a true God? And if it is, how come God don't speak to me? Well, maybe he's speaking to you tonight. And we have to tune in and receive that. The Bible says, here you made a new creature. All the past mistakes you made, all the sin that we did before, God does not count that against us. He's saying, come. Come. Come by the brother of the land, you'll be healed. You're not going to be judged. 
to be mended, to be rescued. To have new clothes put on you, a new life, a new name. And you're in the family of God, in the kingdom of heaven. We're not going to run with that crowd no more. You run with the west side, you ran with the south side. Now I run on God's side. How's that? Amen. Now it's time to give God a chance to run his way. Amen. Let him have place in your heart tonight. Make a choice in your heart to say, I'm going to stop all I'm doing. It hasn't worked out for us, and it's not going to work out for us no more. If God is not number one. He said, the sheep hear my voice. They know when I'm calling them. They know when they're doing wrong. They know that I want to help them. They know that I want to love them. They know that I brought them here. But why don't they love me? What is it that I've done, God, that you don't love me? Why? And I've been with you all along. When you look behind, there was only one footstep. Those two footsteps were mine. It wasn't a coincidence. I was walking next to you. When you look behind and you didn't go to prison, you see the footprints of God's hands upon your life. Favor. Or you here to the Fort Myers Rescue Mission, to his holy place. Before that bullet came across the body to kill you and a random shot, most of us wasn't going to make it here. Some of us don't belong here today in the sense that what we've been doing, but on God's timetable, on God's plans, on God's love, and God's grace and mercy upon our lives, that we're eating up that pastor today, that grace and that mercy. He allowed us to come here and get some things straight, and get some things done right. And at the end, he has an expected end. No matter if you're 50 or 100, there's an expected end at the end. He said, I'm with you. I'll carry you all the way through. I'll carry you all the way through. Trust me. I want nobody to harm you. Your foes, you're going to see your foes underneath your feet. Because I, God, stand beside you. I, you got you. I got you at my right hand, he says. I'm the justice of my right hand. How powerful is God's hand? That can keep the universe together. That can keep the stars in place. That keeps the hurricanes away. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. That can raise the dead, Lazarus. His friend. There's nothing that's going to escape from God's presence. Proverbs 15, 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, seeing the evil and the good. Why not good first, then evil? We're prone to do evil first before we ever do good. It's easy to do evil, but it's hard to do good. It's easy. We're prone to do that. But that's where your love comes in for the Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit. That you fasten yourself down and say, you know, I want to walk this way. I want to be able to smile again. I want to be able to be respected again. I want to look good, talk good, feel good, and it's all good. I want to go back to my kids again. I want to respect my wife. I want to respect God. I want to respect the church. I want to be able to dig my hand deep in my pocket and give my tithe and give my offering. I want to do that. because That makes me feel good. And I want to bless my God because I respect him. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. And all that impossible, God makes it possible. Why? Because now he is able unto him to do all things exceeding, abundantly more than we could ever ask for. And you'll have that crib. And you'll have that nice house with your wife. And you'll have a nice car. And your heart will be pure. And your heart will be clean. Serving God. That's where he's at. That's what it's all about. That's why he's cherishing the moment with you every second of the day. Spend time with our Lord. Talk to him. Discuss the issues. I might, I might not be that smart, Lord. I might not be able to read this word, but could you explain it to me? I might not be able to sing, but I like to sing sometimes with the guys when, when I come to church because I just learned two or three notes and I just jump it. He knows the, pump, the pumping of your heart, la palpitacion. That means your inner spirit. He knows when you're praying and you're crying out, you're sighing. The Holy Spirit picks that up quick at the radar. Takes it right to the Lord's throne. You don't have to say in words how much you love God. God knows how much you love him. God knows. He knows our thoughts and our words from afar before we even speak him. He already knows them. Psalm 139. God knows. He knows. And he loves you. He wants to take the shackles off your feet, man, and, live, and make us free. There's freedom in Jesus Christ. There's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's still a God that died on that cross. And many of us are being deceived. We think that was way back in the Old Testament, way back in that day. Well, that day is still today. Don't be fooled. Don't be deceived, the Bible says. Go with what you know. Go with the flow. Go with sound doctrine. Go with the truth. 
If you see us here trying to get this word out and trying to walk right and do right for everybody, that should tell you something. That should tell you something. You should wake up to this. This is where it's at. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is the last, the last frontier. It's come to the presence of, of, of Almighty God. Don't wait till the last time you can't take a breath. Do it now. Do it today. Be like a sheep. Come. Obey. Trust. Love. Respect. Seek the presence of God, the Bible says. Seek me while I'm near, while I'm here. Hear the voice of the Lord. He says, go left or go to the right. Tell God, if you're not walking with me, I'm not going. I need to see you. I need to know that you're here. When you go to counseling, speak to the counselor. Tell him what's in your heart. Tell him what you feel. Tell him what you learn. Let's sort this thing out together, the Bible says, the word of God says. God said, let's come to terms. Isaiah 118. Let the man of God show you some things that we know that they know through divine intervention of God. Not just the word, but through divine intervention of God. Because we spend time in that word, especially these men of God. That's what they do. That's their job. And they love what they do. And they speak them what they do. That's why I love it so much. I've learned that stuff. Other things that are trivial in my life, I don't need them right now. They're not important to me. What's important to me is learn the presence of God. Cherish the presence of God. Being in that perfect will where he wants me to be. That's where we should be. There'll be less heartache, less headaches. Trust God for that. Once that power of the Holy Spirit come upon you, walk in the, in the works of salvation, you give your heart to the Lord, all things here are made new. You're a new creature. All that load is taken off you. It's not there no more. You don't put that on you no more. You don't live like that no more. You don't speak like that no more. Before you is the cross, behind you is the world. Right? That's what we got to be at. There's a war going on inside you every day. An invisible war. And you got to be astute to these things. God will not fail you. God loves you. God loves all of us. That's why we're here. He brought us here for a special mission. We are the expendables, per se. Let's do it. Give yourself a chance. Give God a chance to love on you. Give God a chance to show you he's God. And all things are possible. There's nothing impossible for the Lord. Let's stand. In your heart tonight, but you raise your hand. Just take 10, 15 seconds to tune in your heart to the Lord tonight. You know what you're going through. You know there's certain things in your heart tonight that you want to give over to the Lord. If you want to come to the altar, please do. That's what we're here for. Right there where you're standing at, analyze yourself tonight. Because all the things that have happened in your life, all the fear going through you tonight, the uneasiness, the unsteadiness, and then what if tomorrow? What about tomorrow? You don't have those answers to those questions. Only God has that. That's why it's so important. That's why it's so important that his presence will be in your heart, that you hear his voice. If you want to come to the altar, the altar is open. We pray with you. We cherish on you. And we'll pray for you. But tonight... Almighty God, Father, we come before your presence, my Lord. Father, there's some other things going through our hearts tonight, my God, that are making it heavy and making it hard for us to hear your voice tonight, my Lord. I pray tonight that your mighty hand, that your Holy Spirit would enter that heart tonight, Lord, and change things around for him. That at the midnight hour, my God, you would turn things around. Father, they will come to consensus in a and stand still, Father, and understand to a consciousness that you're God, that you're there, Almighty God, that you'll always been there, you always have been there, and that you're still waiting them to come to you and surrender. My Lord, I thank you for the many blessings upon this house, upon my life, and upon their lives, Lord. I want them to understand now that this is serious business, and it's coming today, and you're going to come to get us, my Lord. And you want all of us to come home, and none shall perish. Father, I pray tonight for each and every man here tonight that has a burden in their heart, Lord, that you would attack it tonight, that you would work on them tonight, my Lord, 
that you will comfort him in the power of the Holy Spirit, that he'll have a tremendous intervention with you tonight as he's sleeping, my Lord, and you will change his life around for you, my God. Father, I'm not going to end all today and dine with him one more time, my Lord. Your amazing love, your unfailing love, my God, never changes. Changeth not. You never change us, my Lord. It's the day, tomorrow, and forevermore will be a holy, beautiful, loving God. And we thank you for that, my Lord. We thank you tonight for bringing us here out of the darkness to your admirable light. This beautiful light, my God, that we shine forever in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. amen.